Okay, so I've been busy. Actually, my lecture is done for Idaho. It's just all the details, like making charts and stuff. Um, I think you'd really like, if you're actually interested, and I do mean this seriously, uh, understanding the nature of the universe, this video would be incredibly important. We're going to go way down the rabbit hole, very near the bottom. By the way, this is a diagram of the electric field circuit, and trust me, this is going to get interesting really fast. I know this is a boring diagram, and the links for all of these diagrams are below. From 1914, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, uh, from his book, uh, Electrical Circuits, Waves, and Impulses. So, a little over 100 years old. This is also, by the way, the exact same field geometry of the AC power lines going down your street. So, if we were to look end-on of the uh, alternating current lines going down the street, this would be the field geometry. Now, the magnetism is, of course, circulatory, and these are the solid lines. And follow on the diagram if you can't see this picture extremely well in the uh, links below of these uh, four images. I'm going to show you more than just this one image. And the dielectric lines of inertia and accelerations are the dotted lines. If you actually turn this on its side, since power lines go down the street this way instead of down the street this way, you'll actually see we actually have a contracting uh, sphere on the dielectric when actually power is applied to the AC lines, assuming they were off for whatever reason, like the power went out. The only thing that actually happens is the lines get uh, mildly warm and they spread apart. And they spread apart due to the magnetism, the circulatory magnetism. Now, of course, the lines can only extend so far off of this diagram. But if you're actually to trace and extend your vision out to look at the, uh, the circulatory lines of magnetism in a complete picture, you will be looking at the cross-section of slicing a donut right down the middle and then looking at the donut what you'd be looking at is a cross-section of a toroid, or a donut. If we were to look at this uh, straight down, from bottom up to top down, most people don't know what a hyperboloid is, but that's actually an hourglass geometry. That's the actual uh, geometry of inertia and acceleration. Now, when I say inertia, I'm not referring to the modern connotation of inertia. We're talking about you're going down the street in your car, and it has a certain amount of inertia. I'm talking about the original definition of inertia, which is... Uh, as meant energy or pure potential. We could say like a, a three pound lump of plutonium, fissionable plutonium has an enormous amount of inertia in it. This is the original definition of inertia, inertia which confuses a lot of people. Now let's take a look at uh, this diagram, not this diagram, but uh, this one. And we're gonna actually take these two and then we're gonna unfold it a little further. Here we have our electrical field circuit of uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz from over 100 years ago. And here we have our invention of a few years ago. This is the supercell. Uh, this is the magnet showing, uh, un shown underneath the supercell. Here we have either pole of the magnet, so to say. A magnet doesn't actually have poles. And of course, here we have the black space, the black part. And uh, here we have everything, as I've told you before, where we actually see light underneath the supercell or the ferrocell is where magnetism is present. Every place in the uh, supercell where we have no light present is the dielectric. Magne the magnetism is the dielectric field. I mean, if I were to use a really funny and slightly crude analogy, the dielectric would be the chicken sitting on its eggs in the coop, and the magnetism would be the chicken running around the coop. Obviously, both are the same chicken. Is that a pretty crude and funny analogy? Anyway, um, you'll notice something really interesting and uh, in the electrical circuit that we're actually looking at here and uh, the magnet. Remember, this is um, the power lines looking down your street. This is the, uh, the, uh, the field diagram, the conjugate field diagram, because there's no such thing as magnetism. There's no such thing as dielectricity only. There is the magnetodielectric conjugate, kind of like the yin and the yang. There's no such thing as a yin and a yang to use a metaphysical symbolism. There is only yin and yang, as meant this, this uh, Siamese twins, conjoined trends. I mean, there's not one or the other. There is one whole, which is principle and attribute. There's no such thing as illumination. Illumination is an attribute of light, right? We can't extract illumination from light. We can't extract wetness from water, can we? One is a property of the other. Magnetism is a property of the dielectric. So you'll notice that both of these look 100% absolutely identical, except here we're looking at enough current 
you know, going down the power lines to kill you and to power your house and every other house down the street. We're looking at the electrical field circuit going down the power lines. But over here, we're looking at a magnet underneath the supercell. You notice that the geometries are 100% identical? Here we actually have, like I said, everywhere light is present, we actually have the magnetic. Wherever light is not present, we have the dielectric. This is a spatial parameter that actually defines the magnet. The only thing that defines a magnet is uh, point source incommensurability. It is a non-point specific or uh, point source, i.e. spatially coherent, just like a laser. A magnet is uh, not uh, denotatively different than a pre-magnet before it becomes magnet. It uh, has the principle of a point source of field incommensurability where everything is lined up to say that this is a line domains is a bit crude, but we have the same diagram here on both. Why is that important? Let's take a look. I've actually uh, scoped out with the yellow line here the actual physical magnet underneath the, uh, underneath the supercells. Um, these four black spots here and here, these are, like I said, the end wires of the AC lines going down uh, the power lines. And uh, these two black spots are uh, the uh, center part, not the pole, because every magnetic pole, so to say, actually has pressure zones. It has a point of centripetal convergence, then it has an intermediate zone, then it has centrifugal, centrifugal convergence. And you could even see this here on the supercell, but this is the, uh, the, uh, the countersinks towards counter space. This looking side by side is a, a decreasing sphere, or uh, in the case of the magnet and the AC power lines, what we actually have is a hyperboloid going this way. A hyperboloid, as I told you before, is an hourglass shape. But you notice that these four black spots are the uh, portals of the dielectric. Now, the AC power lines, of course, these are the dielectric reflectors which carry the AC current down the lines to your house and to everywhere else to power every damn thing in the entire damn world. How come nobody ever noticed this geometry before? I said on the left we have the AC power lines and on the right we actually have the magnet. This is the magnetodielectric conjugate geometry. Literally, everything is connected. You know, the one thing that defines the stupidity of humanity is that, this, that it thinks, well, we've got science here, we've got metaphysics here, and, you know, it, it separates everything. Human beings like to pigeonhole everything. The only ultimate reality of the universe is inextricably and irreducibly and undeniably so that everything is an interconnected whole. This, of course, is the premise of holism. You can actually look that up. Not these kind of holes, but holism. Kind of like the word holography from the ancient Greek word holos, or the whole. Everything, and it's like there's not a head side and a tail side of a coin. There's just the silver that makes up the coin, in the case of a silver coin. But human beings like, no, this is the head, this is the tail. This is the, if like aliens were to land and uh, they'd want instant proof that hum humanity is even slightly evolved, all we'd have to do is actually show them this diagram and they would instantly know. And if that, of course, if you know, they had some sort of advanced extraterrestrial, this of course is just a crude analogy to prove that humanity is not a bunch of knuckle-dragging morons. All we'd have to do is show them this diagram and then they'd know, oh, human beings understand this conjugate geometry that defines the entire damn universe. This is not like part of, you know, AC power. This is not part of the earth. This is the fundamental conjugate geometry that defines the entire universe. Not the solar system, not just, you know, our galaxy, but the entire universe, both seen and unseen. Most people don't even know what dielectricity is. I'll actually talk about that in the next video. Let's uh, take it a little further here and show you another diagram. And I said the links for all of these are below. I've actually shown the AC power lines. I've actually shown you a power pole here and the actual power lines going down. And this, of course, is the end-on field view. You know, power is not in the wires nor along the AC lines, but rather between them and around them. The circulatory magnetism that goes around these power lines and actually slightly spreads them apart when the current's turned on is the force in motion vector that defines the loss of inertia. Inertia in the true original denotation of what inertia means, not current connotation, as meant true power. If you actually study this diagram and look at the geometry, and of course you'd have to expand out your vision to uh, beyond this to actually see if I would actually take this and turn it on its uh, side, turn it 90 degrees, you'd actually see a contracting sphere. You'd uh, be looking at the uh, hyperboloid 
the uh, geometry of counter space. If you actually increase the voltage on the power lines, which causes all sorts of problems with the uh, systems, uh, this is actually what happens when uh, lightning strikes uh, uh, AC power lines occasionally, instead of being pushed apart, which they are naturally when they have current going through them, which they always do, is that when lightning strikes, it will drastically increase the voltage and the power lines will swing all the way together sometimes, depending on the charge and where the bus stations are, and they'll actually connect. They first have to actually have to jump off the poles where they're connected, so this is uh, actually very hard, but it's been known to occur, and of course, then you've got a catastrophe and a gigantic explosion, but Anyway, this is the magnetodielectric conjugate geometry of the universe. Do you notice that both of these are the exact same? You know, this is just a simple uh, cube magnet underneath the supercell. This is the electric field circuit uh, in uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz's book from 1914 that defines the electric field. If you actually check out the next video, I'll actually be talking about... Uh, there could be a slight... And I'm not a conspiracy theory person at all, but some conspiracies are actually true because um, it was even an issue back in Steinmetz's days that uh, the principle of dielectricity was uh, covered up very, very quickly. And uh, Tesla's advanced systems, the ones for which uh, we don't use, the ones that uh, were stolen, they're based upon dielectricity, not electricity. Electricity is a hybrid, phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electricity. Uh, Q and Planck of electrification. Electricity, of course, is magnetism and dielectricity working in unison as a type of field modality which propagates. This is electricity. This is also why we see the exact same geometry in the AC power lines as we do in the simplex magnet sitting underneath the supercell. Um, here's the other diagram. This is, these red lines actually indicate the AC power lines as they're going down the street. However, you'd be looking at them uh, head on if you're actually able to cut the wires and keep the current and actually view the, v uh, the field, the conjugate field between the AC power lines. This is what it would look like. Same thing we see. This is the plane of inertia, by the way. This is the plane of inertia on the AC power lines. This is the circulatory magnetism. This is also the circulatory, the exact same field geometries. exactly the same. Everything is applicable. The force lines, the geomagnetic precession, the conjugate geometries of the torus and the hyperboloid. If we actually increase the amperage the, uh, on the AC power lines, they'll spread further apart. What this is is a, an increasing donut, if you will, the cross-section of the donut that would be spreading apart the AC power lines. This is increased in the amperage, which increases uh, the magnetism. Voltages to the dielectric is amperages to, uh, to magnetism. But magnetism is not a thing in and of itself. This is what people are saying, oh, we got magnetism. Magnetism is the dielectric field. To think that magnetism is something itself is as stupid as thinking that ice is one thing, water is another, and steam is another. It's as stupid as thinking that... Uh, that uh, illumination is one thing and light is another. No, illumination is a property of light. In the light analogy, the dielectric would be the light, and the illumination would be the magnetism, which, oddly enough, in the transverse coaxial circuit that actually defines light, we have a lot of magnetism. Well, this is the reason that light propagates. But it's not a propagation as meant movement, but it's actually a uh, perturbation of the medium itself, because there is, of course, only the medium. But uh, if you actually, and this, people look at this and they don't go deeply enough, but this is uh, actually uh, the most important, uh, if like someone were like a really hip energy dude, they would like have this tattooed on them somewhere, because this is the most important diagram in the universe. There are actually many other important diagrams, uh, some of which I've created and some of which have existed since ancient times, but this particular diagram, and of course there's only so far you could draw it because the lines end off here, but they don't actually end, it just ends because that's where the diagram is. You know, they would continue on further. Someone would actually, if I actually had room, I would actually tattoo this diagram on myself. <laughs> I have no room to tattoo it on me. That's how actually important. If I had room, I would tattoo this. I could actually tattoo it on the back of my neck. But then people will look at it and they think, oh, he's got boobs tattooed on the back of his neck. Or they look like, it looks like an owl's face. A lot of people said, that looks like an owl's face. But this is literally the most uh, 
important diagram in the universe. Quite literally, I do mean that literally. This is the yin and the yang, but there's not a yin and the yang. There's only the whole. This is the holism. This is the ancient Greek holos. This is the conjugate uh, geometry that defines totality. There is only the dielectric and the loss of that energy potential or inertia that is, uh, as meant magnetism, uh, gravity is not an autonomous field modality. It is non-point source dielectric acceleration. Uh, electricity is only a hybrid of magnetism and dielectricity working in unison. Five times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. Uh, the greatest, if you deny that, I'll give you a quote in the next video. This is exactly what Charles Proteus Steinmetz said. And if you think you know more about electrical theory than that man, then you are an idiot. You would actually be an egomaniac and an idiot. But uh, yeah, check out the next video. I'm actually going to go. It could be a conspiracy. Because even in 1914, Charles Proteus Steinmetz was confused and perturbed. It could, it's more than likely just pure human stupidity. But uh, humanity has replaced uh, the dielectric with electricity, and this unnecessarily complicates the understanding of electrical field theory. Because electricity is not one thing. It is a conjugate of magnetism and dielectricity. But if you don't find this fact interesting, and I'm the first person ever to show this to you, then there is something wrong with you, or you're just not fundamentally interested in understanding things. But you should actually stare at these two diagrams long and hard, and go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. If you're not interested in understanding, you're never going to understand. I mean, that's obviously the quintessential nature of humanity. You either really, really want to know, or you just don't give a damn because it doesn't make you rich or make you popular or get you a new car. Um, it goes without saying. If you like these videos, please click the link below because I'm not a shill and any donation is greatly appreciated. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll be out in Idaho giving my lecture on magnetism on uh, the 5th of July, I believe. <laughs> I should remember. It's, it's somewhere right in there. Oh, the 5th is when I fly out. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, good night. Lux Everitas.